Hello and welcome back to Rob's workshop. Now this is the first project I've completed in a new workshop. I'm fairly pleased with it. So anyway, it's my daughter's sixth birthday coming up in a couple of days and she's absolutely mad on dancing. Ballet, modern, tap, acro, you name it, she loves it. So my wife said to me that she wanted a ballet bar for her birthday. I didn't have a clue what a ballet bar was. So she said it's one of them. So she gave me rough measurements of where the bars needed to be and that's what I've come up with. Now, although she's only gonna be six, I've made her an adult size one, um, just so it'll last her a long time, or until she, she gives up dancing. But because it's got five bars, it should be good for any height. I think she does stretches and stuff on it, I don't know. I just do the woodwork. So anyway, yeah, I've personalized it, painted it a favorite color lilac. I've put a name on it, and a little figurine of a ballet dancer. Um, because we're in lockdown, I was limited to what materials I could get, so I've just used what I had lying around the workshop. Um, I just had a bit of old 4B2. It was reclaimed, so it didn't cost me nothing. Uh, it had a couple of little holes in which I've managed to avoid. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty pleased with it. So stick around and I'll show you how I made it. Right, the materials I'm using for the ballet bar is your standard 4B2 redwood. Now I've cut them to length already. The two side pieces, they are four foot, so 1220. And then the feet, they are 600 now. So you need two of them and two of them. And then for the bars going across, um, I looked into getting dowling and I looked into getting brush poles, but they both came back really expensive. Um, so I've decided to make my own. So I'll show you that in a little bit how I do it. So I've just took some ordinary redwood and I've just cut it to 25 mil square. So there was a bit of a bow in the longer ones as well. So I've just planed them down a little bit. So they've ended up about 35 mil instead of 40 mil like the other ones. So the feet are 90 by 40 and they are 90 by 35. And then as I said, they're 25 by 25. I've already marked out one of the legs and one of the feet as well to get a bit of a head start on the video. So all I did, I decided how much the, the side piece was going to be mortised in to the foot. So I decided on about 20 mil, so half the depth of the, the foot. So I marked that. And then I marked the top and the bottom. So they recommend that the, the bottom dowel is about 150 mil up from the floor. So I've done that. And then the top one is it about 1100 so I've done that one and then I just divided up into equal spaces for five bars and then on the top I'm just going to knock off the corners and for the feet um, I've just marked out the center and where the mortise was going now this was a second hand piece of timber so there was a screw hole in it but because it's in the mortise I've got away with it so I'll just mark up the other ones now So I've just lined the two pieces of wood up and I'm just transferring the line across. So I've just set the combination square now so I can mark the centres. To knock the corners off, I just measured down 25mm on both sides. Then again, using the combination square. Just mark a line where I need to cut it. Right, I've just set up my pillar drill with a, a 25 mil or one inch forcing a bit. And I've set the depth just so I'll go about halfway through the board. While I've still got the pillar drill out, I may as well set it up to drill out for the mortise in the foot. Okay, so I've just got to chisel that square now.
there we have the, the mortars cut. It's not exactly fine joining me, but um, it's good enough for this project. I need to sharpen my chisels up a bit. I haven't used them in absolutely ages. As you can see, they've got a bit of rust on them. But um, as I said, it's good enough for this project. And it'll be very strong. So I'll just cut the other one out now. Right, so there's the two mortars cut. <coughs> Now I don't want anyone in the comments slagging me off for my joinery, it's just a, a quick mortise. I haven't done them in a long time so it's not too bad. And for all you purists out there who said you shouldn't hit a chisel with a hammer, well these are impact resistant and personally I hate using mallets. So that's why I've done it like that. Right, so tenons now. Right, to cut the tenons I'm going to use my table saw just because I've got one and it's the easiest thing for me to use. Right, so I need to set the height of the blade to 10 mil. Now these little depth gauges are great, but um, mine's covered in overspray from spray paint, so it's a bit hard to see. But um, yeah, they are good, and I'll leave a link in the description below to my Amazon shop, um, so you can get one. They're great for setting up table saws, routers, spindle molders, Anything really. Okay, so I don't know whether you can see that, but that's the centre line of my blade. So I've set this depth gauge to 10 mil. So I just need to set it, sit it over the middle of the blade. And raise the blade up to it. So that'll cut 10 mil, sort of like that, and it'll go all the way round. But now I need to set up for that cut there, which is 20 mil. So I'll set my fence 20 mil away from this side of the blade. So that's the depth of our mortars. Right, and I'll just do a test cut on this bit of scrap. So let's see how we did in the mortars. Okay, so width wise we're alright. I just need to take a little bit more. See where I've just left the line? It's a little bit too tight. So a little bit of fine tuning. Okay, so that's not a bad fit for a first go. I'm happy with that. I haven't done one of them in a long time. So I just need to do the tenon on the legs. Okay, so one mortise, one tenon. Nice snug fit. My tuner up a little tiny bit with the chisel, but that's a very strong joint. I'm happy with that. Right, to knock off the corners on the legs, I've just tipped the chop saw, or the mitre saw, to 45 degrees, and I'll just cut it off both sides. On the feet pieces, I'm going to knock off the, the corner there, right across there, just to take that sharp corner off there. So I'll, I'll measure down about 15 mil. And again, using the combination square 
I'll just mark that off. Then I can cut it on the mitre saw. Okay, so I've just set up a little quarter round router bit in the router just to knock off all the sharp edges. I've just done a little test piece. So it just takes a sharp edge off. Right, because I've knocked the corners off there on the feet pieces, it would have been difficult to run the router and stop it there and then match it up to go around there. So what I've done, I've just turned it on its side. Because I haven't got a, a vice set up yet, I've just thrown in a couple of sash clamps just to keep it stable while I go around with the router. Right, so now's the time to make the dowels. So as I said before, I've got some 25mm square stock or 1 inch square stock. And I've done a little tester piece here. So I've drilled a 1 inch hole. I've done that. And that fits in there. It's not a perfect fit. Um, but it it's difficult to make perfect dowel unless you've got a, a copy attachment on your lathe. So the way I'm going to do it is on the router table. So I've got a, a half inch round over bit and if I do it on each corner then it rounds it over to near enough a perfect dowel. It's, it's near enough for what we want. Um, once it's painted up, sanded and painted up, it'll be fine. We're at the router table. I've set half inch round over cutter in there. Now the bottom of the cutter is flush to the bed of the router table and the bearing is flush with the fence of the router table. I've just set up a couple of blocks there just to hold the wood in place while it pushes through. perfect dowels. A little bit of sanding and they're good enough for what we want. So that's the next job, sand everything up before assembly. Because I'm designing this to come apart for easy storage, I'm going to screw through the legs into the dowels. So I'm just going to drill a pilot hole and then count the sink from the other side. I'll do the same as well with the feet so I can screw it into the legs but these are going to be glued the screws are just going to be there to hold it until the glue dries <laughs> right so now I'm ready to assemble it a little bit of glue around the mortise and tenon put it together a couple of screws in it Jobs are good and just make sure it's square. Ok, 
Okay, so drill your pile of rolls. And then I'm using three inch, 10 screws. Just put a couple of them in. Find your square. And just check if it's square. That's spot on. And just wipe away your excess glue. Right, so we've got the legs and the feet. We've got the five dials done. It's all been sanded to a 120 finish. So it's uh, it's ready for painting. Before painting now, because it's got a lot of uh, knots in it, they'll tend to bleed through the paint. So I use this, it's called knotting solution. So all there is really is a bit of French polish or button polish. Um, you just paint it over the knots um, and that stops the sap bleeding through the paint. Okay, so I'm ready for the paint now, but because it's for my daughter, I think I'll personalise it and cut out some letters so I can put a name on the uh, on the side here. So I'll do that next on the on my new scroll saw. Right, so I've just been to the computer and I've uh, printed out some letters for my daughter's name. Printed that on card, so I've just got to cut it out now. Draw around it on a bit of wood, a bit of 3mm MDF, 4mm MDF, um, and then cut it out with a scroll saw. Right, because I'm going to put these this name on both sides, I need two of every letter. So all I've done, I've cut little squares out of 3mm MDF, and I'm just going to, I've taped them together. I'll just draw around that, and then I can cut two letters out at the same time then. Okay, so just need to do the I and the A, and then I can cut them out then. stick them on after they've been painted right so all the painting's done now and there's the poles there painted grey now I just put a screw in each end of them and straddle them between the two saw horses so I can paint them all the way around without laying them on the bench or anything there's the letters and the figures yeah my wife decided she wanted ballerinas on it so that was a, a later addition my next job is to use the two part super glue to stick the letters and the figures on to the legs. Okay, so I'm just going to use a bit of marking tape to to mask out where I want them. Um, I've just put it on my jumper. It takes off some of the fluff, so there's no chance of it sticking too much to the paint and pulling it off. The last thing to do is just to screw it all together. As I said before, I've designed it so I can come apart. So I'm just using ordinary, where are they? 
two and a quarter eight wood screws go through there nice and easy I've already pre-drilled the ends of these um, that was for putting the screw in for putting them across the trestles to paint them so they're already pre-drilled so I can just put them in and whack the screw straight through now good snug fit What do you think of it? Fantastic! Alright, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.